Hi. If you have ever created a scatter plot with a discrete variable, you may have noticed that the data points tend to overlap each other. And this makes it difficult to see the density and the distribution of the individual data points. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to jitter the data points. And jitter just means that we're going to add random noise to the position of the data points along the discrete variable. And as you can see, the plot is easier to read, the distributions are more clear, and it's also easier to see differences in cluster density in different areas of the plot. Before we begin though, I just want to emphasize that you should only jitter certain types of variables. So you only want to jitter variables that are categorical or discrete. And that's because the position of the data point for these variables represents category membership. So for example, the position of this data point along the x-axis just represents the membership to its core type of 1, 2, 3, or so on. So uh, you do not want to jitter continuous variables. And that's because the position of the data point for continuous variables represents a specific numerical value. So for example, um, this data point represents a response time of about 2. And if we jitter the position of this, then we're actually distorting the data. And um, that's not what we want to do. So make sure that when you are applying this tutorial, that you're, um, that you're only using discrete or categorical variables. OK, so in this example, we have hypothetical data from 100 subjects. And we have two variables. The first is response time, which is continuous and score, which is discrete. And we want to modify the score so that we separate the overlap between the data points. So first I just created a new column called modified score. And in the first cell, we're going to add a formula. So we're going to start off with the original score. And to the original score, we want to add our jitter. So we're going to add our random noise. So first we're going to call the rand function and this is going to return a random number between 0 and 1. Next we're going to subtract 0 0.5 and this is going to ensure that our random numbers are between negative 1 half and 1 half. And then we're going to divide by a constant and this restricts the range that the random numbers can take. So the larger number that you divide by, the smaller the range is going to be. So in this case, we divide by 5. So we're ensuring that our random numbers are going to be between negative 0.1 and 0.1. OK, so I'm going to apply the formatting to the rest of the data. And then I'm going to update our chart to reflect the new modified score. To do that, I'm going to right click on the graph choose select data and we just need to update the x values so right now it's uh, referring to column b with our original score and we need to change that to column c with our modified score okay there's one more thing i want to do and that's to add transparency to the data points so to do that click on any data point and then choose the format tab and move the transparency slider to about halfway Okay, so now you can see that the distribution of the data points is more clear, but importantly, we still maintain the relationship between each point and its respective score. So I just want to show you one more example. In this example, we have categorical variables. So we have a control group and a treatment group, and we're looking at the response times for both groups. So normally you see this data represented usually with some kind of summary statistics, such as a mean, um, and you normally see like a bar graph or a box and whisker plot. But in this case, we want to see all of the subjects' response time data. So this example is identical to the previous example with two exceptions. First, we need to dummy code our data, and that just means we need to assign a number to each group. So I assign the number 1 to the control group and number 2 to the treatment group. So we're going to list out our dummy code, and then we're going to modify the dummy code just 
uh, like we did before. So that should yield a graph that looks similar to this. And next we need to update our x-axis labels to reflect our groups. So unfortunately in Excel you can't change the names of the x-axis labels for scatter plots. So what I do is I just delete the x-axis labels by right-clicking on the labels, clicking Format Axis, and then under the Ticks area, I change the axis labels to None. And then I simply use text boxes to label the data points. So in this case, we have the Control and the Treatment Group. So it's not a very elegant solution, but it works. And that's all. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. And thank you for watching.